take two. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm glad you guys could join us today. I know it's kind of a spur of the moment on here, but uh, we've got things together. And I am super excited because this is my hero from all the all the Bigfoot stuff and people that we know. Uh, I could not wait to get him on here. I've been so excited all day to have him on. Uh, I'm going to let him explain to you about who he is and how, how things are. And I just can't wait to talk to this man. We have a, a good conversation before we come on here. So, guys, appreciate y'all coming back. I know we had a little glitch, but I'm glad y'all are back. And we will talk to y'all here in just a few minutes. But right now, guys, please welcome Mr. M.K. Davis. Hello. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Thank you, sir, for being here. All right, Mr. M.K. Yes. Tell people a little bit about you, how you got started into this. Well, I kind of backed into it, actually. I I was uh, into astrophotography, which is kind of a specialized photography, you know, taking pictures of space objects through a telescope. So uh, I began that, and I learned quite a bit about film and how to, how to process film and, rate, you know, uh, uh, rescue faint details, you know. Uh, and then one day I saw a couple of frames from the Patterson film. Uh, and this was at the beginning days of the internet. And these were outstanding, outstandingly clear frames. Uh, unlike anything they show on television. And I, I thought to myself now, if the whole film is like this, it should tell its own story. It, it, it shouldn't need anybody to vouch for it. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it, so I began an inquiry. I, I was more, it was more along the lines of, uh, the photography behind the film. And, and I wanted to see if, if the film, if you got that quality up on that film, you would either see a zipper or you would see, uh, uh something biologically recognizable. Mm -hmm. And so, I began that, and uh, it's lasted all the way up until now. Uh, so that's about 30 years. Okay. I, I told everybody 40, 50. Let's, let's extend it just a little bit. <laughs> no, it's been about 30 years, y'all reckon so. Yeah. Yep. So have you uh, – how am I going to put this to you? Have you enjoyed this trip? Cause I know you've done it for a long, long time and guys for you really to understand, uh, when I first got into Bigfoot, uh, phenomenon, uh, was because of movies like Sasquatch and, uh, legend of Boggy Creek, those kind of stuff. And they were great. They were absolutely great. But then when the internet come along and I, and you got to see guys like Mr. Mr. Davis, uh, it was just so more solidified and what, uh, film he is talking about a lot of people mk does not really know what the patterson gremlin film really is well if you if you haven't uh, had occasion to watch this film it's it's called the patterson gimlin film now but prior to 2003 it was known only as the patterson film uh mr gimlin was kind of absent for 33 years and he shows back up at a conference there in Willow Creek and, uh, people just fell all over him and put his name on it. Uh, it's not how they do it normally. The person who operates the camera, it's not even the person who, who rented it or who owns it. It's the person running it that gets their name on it. Uh, so I've, I've continued to call it the Patterson film because that's rightly how it should be. Uh, nothing, okay. no disrespect to him. Uh, it, uh, at one time he wanted nothing to do with the film. He, he told Miss Patterson and she told me, she related this to me that he didn't, when they come out of the woods, that he didn't want his name and he refused to go with them on these, these live shows, you know, where they, where they showed the film and and kind of made the circuit, you know, in auditoriums and around the country, and they had they hired a as, uh, an actor to portray him, so that they could you know have their conversation and talk about the film. 
Uh, so, yeah, that's how much he did not want his name on it. Well, be. Yeah. Uh, so now it seems kind of funny to me <laughs> that he do he doesn't want his name to not be on it. Uh, yeah. he'd just about fist fight you if you didn't say his name. Uh, so it's totally different attitude toward it. Oh, I've seen some of his interviews. He's all in now. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's uh, a unique piece of film. Uh, let's put it this way. What was their background in making this film? I, I do know, but uh, I would like for the people to know just a little bit more, uh, of how this film come about. Well, they, they were actually going to shoot a commercial a movie about Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, 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 the Bluff Creek drainage area in Northern California, they had suffered a, a huge 500-year flood uh, in 1964. And that area had been really hot up until then with Bigfoot activity. And after that, not so much. You, you couldn't find anything up there. So... Patterson told uh, Al Hodson, who was kind of the go-to guy there in Willow Creek, he says, if they show back up, I want to know about it because I want to come down here and film the tracks and everything. And uh, lo and behold, uh, by 1967, they had reappeared. And, uh, and so uh, this other group came up there, uh, Canadians, and they brought a tracking dog with them and, uh, and, and several other people. They, there was a school teacher from Orleans came with them. Uh, Renee DeHinden came. And then uh, they left. And so Al Hudson called Roger and says, well, look here, I didn't want to call you down on top of them. So now they're gone now. So if you want to come, come on down. He says, I think I will. I, he headed on down. And him and and, and Robert Gimlin. Mm -hmm. So that, that's how he came to be down there during that time. Mm -hmm. and from what I understood, they, uh, and of course you know more about this than I do, uh, that they spent like a month down there searching for uh, it was it was protracted. Yeah, he stayed a long time. Uh, matter of fact, uh, uh, a guy named uh, uh, I see, I've forgotten his first name Perry. Uh, uh, hold on, Richard. Hmm. I, my memory's not what it used to be, but anyway, the, a guy a guy went down there and saw a fresh hay in a makeshift corral in November. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they were still some activity down there then. So that, that's this is from mid about the mid to late summer all the way to November. Yeah. And you, you've actually had an opportunity to go down there, haven't you? To I've been down there about probably 15 or 20 times. Yeah. Man, I'll I'm tell a you veteran, what. A veteran of Bluff Creek. <laughs> Well, as far as the Patterson film, that's kind of like walking on the Holy Land, ain't it? Not, not to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm kind of stubborn about things. Uh, I, I had some pertinent questions that I, I wanted to be answered, mm -hmm. and, and I, I come to realize that you know you're liable to hear just about any kind of uh, answers from the Bigfoot community. I mean, just a lot of times it's just what people think. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to get the, you know, the facts, you have to go yourself. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what you've done throughout these years. And I really want people to understand your work on this film. Uh, Cause like you said, there's so many theories and uh, how, how people set themselves in stone and what they want to think about this, whether it's a hoax or whether it's not uh, what's going on. But what I've liked about you all this time is that you basically just use facts that you find. Yeah, yeah. The guy, the guy, by the way, was Richard Henry. Okay. Uh, that's the guy that went down there, and, and this, this was Richard Henry went down there with someone. He went, he went with Jim McLaren. Mm -hmm. You know who was one of the 
main Bigfoot guys there also. And they drove a Jeep all the way to the film site. And, and so now when they talk about the film site, they say, well, you would have had to fly a piece of equipment in. You know, it was so remote. But that wasn't the case at all. They were they were pulling logs out of there like mad. They had 18 wheelers down there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, that they were uh that's that's how the whole thing developed, but you know, uh, it's it's a whole nother story. But it that's why it was so protracted also. But they uh Richard Henry drew a map, which I have that map, and he says we we parked here. And that's an, you know, <laughs> I'm sitting there looking at that. And it says we parked here, and yeah. and and you know, Robert Gimlin had done already told me that there's no way you you'd have to fly in any kind of equipment or anything, you know, with a helicopter. I said I don't think so. Now, I've been down there. I saw the old logging roads. So yeah. they, they came in from both ridges on either side. And and they they got they put lime down there, and and would mix the lime with the sand to let it set up, the quick lime, and it would make that stuff firm and hard, and is what you could drive a Cadillac down there. Is it still open? Uh, it is, but they in recent years they chisel plowed the roads and let them wash, and uh, and they just wanted to return the place to. To, to a it. wild condition, it's natural setting. Yeah, okay. it's natural. So it don't have it don't have salmon in it. Probably had salmon in it before they put that that lime in there. You know uh, that lime it destroys that scent that salmon need to go up stream with. Okay, you know it's a, okay. it messes it up chemically. Uh, I found some of the old lime piles down there, and uh, they still had. I tested it with a stick, pH stick. That's a it's a acidic forest. Everything should be acidic, mm -hmm. but but if you find alkalinity, you know it's artificial. Yep. Somebody brought it in there, uh, and also uh, with carbonates, it was real high in carbonates. So and nothing grew there. That's how I saw the spot. It was it was just bare. Everything is lush all around it. And then there's this bare spot. <laughs> so yep, well, where they dumped it. You could take your fist and push it up to the ground and shove down, and powder would come up around your, your arm and blow in the wind. Yeah. You know, it was pretty obvious that was the lime pile. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Davis, uh, throughout the years, you have added on layers and layers and layers and layers on this film to – stabilize it, uh, to clear it up and to make, uh, more definite. Anybody that's ever seen, I don't know if you've, you've talked about first generation, second generation film. Um, but I know that you have improved the quality of this film to such an extent that it's just, you know, like one of the, uh, guys in the chat room, Mr. Stephen Hicks says it's never been successfully debunked. And I think a large part of that is due to what your, your work has done, accomplished with it. Well, when you get the film up to those levels, it's either going to make you happy or it's going to make you mad, yeah. depending on how you view it. Yeah. Uh, if you're one of those people who don't, who, who have their own pet notions about what's on the film, the, a better film shows it to be something different. Well, you might be a little upset, and some people would even try to stand in the way of, of improving it. Uh, and then you got uh, other people like yourself that appreciate the quality and, uh, and getting a good look at it so you can make an educated decision on whether you want to back yeah. it or not. You know, and I think that it's, it's at that point now, but could go higher. Uh, with with images off the original. I think it's amazing the work that you've done That's because the film quality back there is nowhere near what we have now. And what you have done to it is just amazing. Uh, you've done some recent 
very recent work that I would like to bring up, uh, the position of the hand and the thumb, neck movement, uh, and the glute actions. That's, that's some of the stuff that you've done recently. Would you care to uh, talk a little bit about those? Yeah, you know, I, I posted them recently, but I actually did the work quite a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just uh, stopped using my my YouTube to uh, to uh, you know for for a while there. I just got you know the 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 commenters. A lot of the commenters were you know, trolls, mm-hmm. for lack of a better word. And you know, I just got kind of fed up with it, and I just uh, moved everything I was doing over to Facebook, where I could be in better control. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it only went out to my friends on Facebook. Uh, but but recently, I've returned to my YouTube channel, and uh, I wanted to to get all that stuff on out there. I want people to to have these images to look at. It, uh, these are uh, these images are targeting uh, objections to the yeah. film, and and people used to say, "Well, I think it's a man in a suit because I can't see two halves of the glutes. It looks like a, a pillow stuffed in a suit, mm-hmm. and, and they obviously hadn't had access, or they would have never said that." Uh, the the whole first part of the film involved straight straight on shots at the rear end, and you could see you you can not only see that it had glutes, but that it had worn the hair off the insides of them scooting around. So it can give you a little insight into where it was staying at. You know, it probably staying under an overhang or something like that, where it had to scoot around. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and, and so so uh, you know it. That's that's biological stuff, you know. That's that's a uh, you'll either see biological stuff that'll that'll uh, make you think this is real, or you'll see zippers and seams and all of that. When you improve the film, mm-hmm. you should see one or the other. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, authentically speaking, yeah, you know, it, uh, if if you are hoaxing you're only going to have in the film what's built into the film. But if you have something authentic, you're going to have just tons and tons of the unexpected things that are occurring uh, in, in real time, live time. You'll see things moving about biologically and biomechanics. They call it where you see the, uh, the muscles under the, the shoulder blades moving, uh, the, you know, the, the glutes moving independent while she walks, the breasts are bouncing, all of that. And, and it's made even easier to view with stabilization. Well, it's a natural flow to any kind of a creature or a person, whatever you want to go with. And the film shows to me of a natural flow and not, and I can understand why they say that it was uh, a hoax because uh, back in the day there was, uh, uh, and I, we talked about this, and I guess we'll bring it up again, uh, The Planet of the Apes was a big-time movie coming on that day. So a lot of it was thrown that way as a hoax. And I know uh, for me, when I see this, and I've already explained to you because I hope you could show a picture here in just a minute, uh, that this is not something that this film crew or anybody associated with planet of the apes was doing. Uh, no, uh, John chambers was interviewed by Bobby short. And he said that I'm good, but I'm not that good. Yeah. He says that, uh, she asked him, you know, well, well, why did you, why did you let people attribute it to you? Why didn't you say something? He said it was good for business. He said, I just let them talk, but I, I, there's no way I could have produced what you see on that film. Mm-hmm. Yep. And can you show that picture that, uh, Mr. Todd Gatewood been a lot of help with you on this. I, I don't think I have it on this, this laptop here. Um, let me see. No, I'm pretty sure I don't. Give me up just a minute. I'm going to uh, 
swap over my hard drives just a minute. I think that's probably the best thing I can do. It's okay. And just take a minute. Okay. While you're doing that, I'm reading over the comments that we uh, uh, have got on here. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we will like to get into uh, some of the Indian lore if we can. Uh, Ken, uh, he's got some interesting stories there, too. Uh, and I don't believe that it was just a tale. I know, Ken, Ken you, you must not be... Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you believe in uh, Bigfoot or not, but I, I sure don't mind if, either way. I'm glad you're here. Ken's one of my guys. Let's see. All righty. Yep. No, uh, Ken, you're not. No, you're not. And you're 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 fine. Ken Ken is one of my unbelievers, but he's a great guy. He really is. He's a nice guy. He's not here to belittle nothing. <laughs> All right. Is he, is he able? <laughs> My people are crazy. I love them. It hadn't showed but, up yet. Here it comes. Is it showing? Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Let me let me find the picture now. Patterson I know you at one time you had a picture sitting back there behind you in the uh, Bigfoot cave. Yeah, I do. Print it out one. Okay, I've got it up. I'll let you. We're gonna. I'm. I'm a little unfamiliar with this module. Yep. How do you share? Restream. Uh, let's see. Yeah. How do you share? No, because. Uh, up there where it says invest. Uh, invite guests. Share screen. There's a the part. Yeah. Entire screen. I'm I'm going now. I don't know how, but I'm doing it. Okay, cool. Because <laughs> you're doing something I don't know how to do. <laughs> okay, now I've I've sent it to you, and I think you got to okay it. If I'm correct. Yeah, add the stream. There you are. Okay. Let's just go to this one right here. I should have it already up. There we go. How about that? There we there we go. Now this is a blowed up picture of uh we we lovingly and affectionately call her Patty. So it can you want to explain to this uh to people what this is about? This is that uh frame that was that came off the original that was leaked that I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. And uh Todd was able to take it to another level. Uh it was one of the best images there was. Uh it's the one of the images that I saw way all those years ago that uh, told me that the, there was a much better version of the film out there. Mm -hmm. And when I when I saw this, Todd sent me this copy. I like I had a heart attack, and I first the first thing I did was overlay it over the original, and then fade it in and out so that I could follow all the details from this enhancement over to the original. And everything is in place, and you can see most of it on the original once you see it on the enhancement. Mm -hmm. So that, that this is a Sasquatch. This is Patty. This is this the way a, Sas a Sasquatch looked. Uh, not, they probably all, all don't look like this, but... Uh, this is Patty. And I've said here, and I, I told you right before we got started, there you go, zoom in. Look look at the mouth where you can actually see the teeth and the hairs below 
like on the lips and to the side. That does not look like something that uh, is on a fur suit. Because back not in the sixties, they didn't make suits like that. Looks like she's pulled some hair out right there, don't it? Uh huh. And it's you know, so kind of a sore right there. Show the eyes. I want people to see something. They tell me them ain't eyelashes. She got a little gap. She's got a gap, and exactly. she also she has a discharge that comes out of that eye. If you look at the original, mm -hmm. uh, you can see the discharge. Let me see if I can find that. Let's see. No, that's not it. Let's see. No, I had to take my other one out to put this one in. Let me, I, I'll find one. Hold on. Yeah, and the, and the point I'm trying to get across right here is that in a suit that's made, it's going to be made more perfect, more, um, how you would call, in line, more perfection. This is not showing perfection. This is showing uh, <coughs> nature at what I call at its best. Okay. 2008. Saturday. Oh, that's not it. No, that's not it. Hold on. True Giants. Anderson highlights. Guys, could you see all the years in this computer stuff? It's a lot of them. A lot of it. Oh, we lost it there. Trying to find that particular frame. I just go back and type in. Second quality. That'll get me there, probably. That is an interesting. Uh, Joanne Glass wants to know how big was Patty? I'm sure it'd be an estimation. Uh, in, in my estimation, she's probably around six five. Six six. Uh, there's the original frame right there. Hold it. Let me. It, it should. There we go. There we go. Yeah. It takes this little laptop a little while. Yeah, and loaded it up. Yeah. It is. Yeah. There it goes. There you go. Yeah, there we go. This is the exact same. It's what he Yeah. Let me move them over side to side to side. I can't believe that. Okay. Yeah, because I could even see the. Uh, it's exactly the same yeah. image. I mean, yeah. there's not a official. In so you would find a stuff in there where the computer don't did not match the original because it it just predicted. You know, this yeah. is an exact match. It is an enhancement. Yeah. And I can see it. it. Yeah. And I'm looking, I'm, seriously, I am looking for any differences at all. 
You I mean, can it's even got make out the inside of the mouth there. Yeah. And, and to me, you, all of us owe Todd Gatewood a, a, a very hearty thank you for doing yeah. that. I don't know how he does see that. The, see that discharge coming out of the eye? He's, it's overexposed here. You don't see it. Yeah. You see it coming across the cheek and another out of the corner. Okay. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, like you said, it's a little bit overexposed on the one on on the enhancement. Yeah, she's got a braid in her hair. A couple of a couple of frames prior. You can see the braid land over the cheek. It came about right here. Uh huh. And by the time it came to this frame, it's just laying under this hair. Now is not uh, the. You, that's it right there you see it's got these herring bone patterns chevrons hmm. yep it's and then it goes underneath and up over the ear yep and the ear is under hair right here it's just a lot of wind a lot of winds at her back mm -hmm. yep I, I seen the video of where you was talking about at one time the ear was exposed it was uh, you could get a good look at it but it didn't stay long yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like that a is, uh, you know, I, I still get goosebumps looking at this. This is you're looking at the uh, the, re the real. You know, this is nobody's uh, rendition. Mhm. Mm no, oh, I accidentally flipped the frame 352. This is frame 350. I don't know what I did with it. Well, anyway, there you have it. What is that? That's, That's just red. two copies, two copies of the same frame. Somebody drew something around here. I, I they did that before I got the copy. Uh, okay. th this this is another copy without that. They so th I guess somebody saw that it, this was was something, and he was wondering what it was. Okay, can, I'm trying to figure it out myself. Uh, I don't know. I can't tell you. It's some some kind of growth or something. I don't know what it is. There's nope. there's there's the female anatomy right here. Of course, yeah. It actually has a third one right here. This is one. This is two. And this is a little small, you know, a defect third one. Huh. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. I hope you can. I can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just the kind it's it's there's a lot of how you say uh i don't like to use the term inbreeding but a lot of of uh you know mixing mm -hmm. and and things go wrong interbreeding yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> i try i try to be nice you know but even even to the even to the sasquatch but. yeah yeah no i get it uh we was talking earlier and we was talking about uh the native americans and that uh i'm gonna let you explain this story because it's such a good one such a good one uh you was talking about that you've actually talked to the indians about uh bigfoot and uh uh, kidnappings oh yeah uh, and what they told me let me see if I can get back around here just a second hold on just a second there we go I guess uh, yeah. can you see me I, I can't can see, see me Okay. I can see you on well, both sides. Now what, what, what they told me was that in the Bluff Creek area, 
back in the 1840s, there was a, about 10,000 Chinese. There we go. Uh, and they were doing hydraulic mining, gold mining. And that's just the heart of the Bigfoot country. And these, these really, uh, for lack of a better word, I refer to them as true giant Bigfoot, the 100% Bigfoot, uh, were notorious for kidnapping. They would kidnap women, kidnap children. And they had their choice with 10,000 people in there. Living, they lived, they brought their families and all. That's where they lived at that camp. And so after X number of years, you started to see a, a, a demographics change amongst the Bigfoot. And you started to see fewer and fewer of those great big tall guys and more and more like Patty that had mixed blood. And they, they had features on them that were very much human-like where the big tall guys were monstrosities. And they, if you get away from the Bluff Creek area, even today, you, you start to see Bigfoot that look like the Paul Freeman video. Mm -hmm. If you've seen that video, you'll see what I mean. It does not have the same appearance as Patty and does not leave the same footprint. Uh, so, but if you go back over to the Bluff Creek area, you start to find them like, like the Patty subject uh, with the human-like footprints and uh, the hair is all irregular, patchy. There's mm -hmm. no way that that hair keeps her warm in the winter. She don't have enough of it. Yeah. It, it's, it's, she's got another method for doing it, uh, which is something that needs study. But uh, it's not – you look at the Bigfoot there in the Paul Freeman, it's covered completely in thick, luxuriant hair. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a world of difference. Uh, and, and you it's, – it's a – it is a true giant. Yeah, and I, I've always kind of looked at it like this. It seems like uh, – and I'm a firm believer that there are different species – and that the further south you go and they actually get smaller with the coat is uh immaculate i'm gonna go that route the further north the further west you go into california they get bigger and that's probably what you were calling referring to as the true giants right uh, and as you look at patty uh it's kind of like almost like she's got the mange you know yeah way. she's she's pretty rough looking uh Mm -hmm. hair, hair wise, uh, mm -hmm. that's that's what I was saying, you know. And she, you see, she's got a gap in her in her eyelash on the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's from that's from pulling at that eye. She's got a discharge coming out of that eye, and she just constantly rubs it. You yeah. know, no, uh, can't get any relief, and just uh, pulling at them. Mm -hmm. Uh, that makes it, a lot more sense to me now why that gap is there yeah you, you see you you can see that's what, when I say you know bio uh, logical uh, biomechanical mm -hmm. things that you see in everyday life yeah you know you see that on her when the pictures get better mm -hmm. it, it, if she was a hoax it, she would you'd start to see zippers and seams and all kinds of things, you know, the, you start to see all the flaws, uh, but that there's no flaws there. I will say this, uh, MK, I have watched, like you said, the biomechanics and a lot of, of the film shows her backside and people are talking about the, the glutes and such. And I've watched your rendition of it too. Uh, once you see it, you can't unsee it. And, if you watch the right buttocks, I'm, I mean, I don't care, the right side buttocks versus the left, she walks like a woman walks. You can see the what I call uh, the sway in her buttocks. That only you know most only women have. I'm gonna say it that way. 
It, there's nothing like a. Let me see what I can come quote up a with. big pillow back there. Now she might have wide hips. Now I give her that, but that could also be from childbirth and everything else. But there is definitely a, a, a separation there. Well, still populating. But I hit. Okay. Let's see what comes up. That's that's not not the one I wanted. Let me find. Yeah, once you get it up, I'll, I'll click click it back up there. Just let me know when you've got it. Oh, I got better stuff than that, Ken. <laughs> well, you got to understand, these are arguments in an, of objection. That's why I say that. <laughs> well, take Do a look. You, you kind of went uh, out. For, this is for this is for all the people who who thinks that she's got a pillow for a rear end. No, uh, I think you can't really dispute this right here. You know that is and she did been doing the what you call the 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 butt scoot. Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere, wherever she stayed, she's been scooting around on it. Yeah, I I can see. It's, it's a form of that is not a pillow. Cannot be. No. Uh, <laughs> here's some more right there. You can see right in the second one from the right. There you go. Yeah. You see it really well, not good. Only right? the but if you look over to the first one on the left, you can see actually see the muscle. Okay. And as she starts walking with her left foot, see how it diminishes and goes into more of a curved shape. That's exactly what I was talking about. That you are not going to wear a pillow, and this right side not go with it. You don't. You see where I'm going with it? Yeah. This is a natural walk of a female. Has to be. I've watched it way too many times. Now I and got Ken, sport. yes, you, you are on here sitting here watching Bigfoot's butt. But there's a reason why we bring this up, Ken. Uh, it is a simple reason there have been so many objections and people have not studied this film like Mr. Mr. Davis has here that if they want to throw an objection up. Uh, they've got arm extenders for her hands. They've got uh, a pillow for her backside. Uh, they've got this, you know, costume, uh, you know, see what I'm saying? We're basically trying to prove, or uh, Mr. MK Davis is now, I don't care if you throw me in the hat too, uh, that this is not, some kind of hoax is something that they just got out there and uh, thought they would come up with, you know what I'm saying? Or just film this and go, Hey, this is the real deal. No, you're actually looking at the real deal. That's why we're talking about the butt, uh, the breast, the ears. I, I think the nose is really convincing that it is more squared off at the tip than uh, humans per se. Uh, the eye, the eyelashes, the hair that's on her face. All of it tells me this is not a makeup artist work right here. So, yes, Ken, you're sitting here watching the Bigfoot's butt. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give him an anniversary here. Hold, hold on. There you go. There, let's just start it up. You see the the two halves working independently on her rear end, mm -hmm. and you can see the muscle under her right shoulder moving up and down with the swing of the arm. That is a that that is a ton of muscle, and 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 uh, the the height is. Six five, six six, but the uh, the what it weighs is going to be uh, well over a thousand pounds. She's a big girl. They uh, they 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 got they hired this man from uh, North American Science Institute by the name of Jeff Glickman. They paid him seventy five thousand dollars to do a study on the film. 
to tell them if it was a hoax or not. He estimated her weight to be 1,400 pounds. Good. And they, the Bigfooters were the worst critics of him. And he says, look here, I, I, this is what I came up with. I used tried and true methods, scientific methods to come up with this. And he said, I'm sticking by it. And now they, since those days, they've, they come to realize that a Bigfoot is, is probably double the density of a human, of a modern man. Yeah. Uh, if you, if you took a cubic inch of their flesh, they're going to be way double what the same cubic inch of our flesh would weigh. And, hmm. and so if it looks like he weighs 700 pounds, he, he weighs probably 1400. I will tell you this much, uh, the weight itself at six five, anything that's going to be over four or five hundred pounds is, you know, because what you your normal guy, uh, football player, and all these, I know all these people can uh, relate to this. Yeah, football player at six five six six, they're not much over three hundred four hundred pounds, you know, but a five hundred pound six uh, female, mm. <coughs> and we're just talking half the weight, half the weight. I uh, I went to Bluff Creek with some Japanese filmmakers, mm -hmm. and we we found a line of tracks going across the sandbar that that were four inches deep, and I could not put a dent anywhere. I could jump up and down. Mm -hmm. I weighed two hundred thirty eight pounds, and I couldn't put a dent in that stuff. Mm. I mean, that's heavy. That's heavy. That's really heavy. I I knew I was looking at. It was a person, not a modern man. Mm -hmm. uh, let me uh, see if I can find that. Hold on just a minute. I've seen Alabama Bigfoot on your list. What's that about? Alabama Bigfoot? It might have been a material for that conference. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's see if, if this has got it. No, this don't have it. Hold on. Uh, Spencer, I, I will tell you, if we don't get this question answered on this show, I will call you and tell you personally. Okay. Uh, but there's uh, some other things that's, uh, uh, Spencer wants to know why can't they be tracked. Um, I'll answer that if you don't feel like talking to about it here in just a little bit. Why can't they be tracked? Yeah. Uh, they can be tracked, and uh, they they pull. Some, they got a bag of tricks. Uh, a lot of times they'll get up on the ball of their foot and make a half track and try to get you to think it's a bear. Yeah. Um, and. You won't see no claws, but you'll see the front half of the foot looks like a bear. Let me see. I was going to try to find one of those tracks, deep tracks. Let's see here. Yeah, Ken, yeah. you could you can understand why Mr. Davis is such a hero to me. Look this at that. was a lot of work. My goodness. That thing was deep. Uh, 10 centimeters. And, and, that's just just a little bit shy of four inches. Mm -hmm. She's a heavy one, or somebody was. And this was with him, uh, Japanese or Chinese? Yeah, Japanese. Japanese. I don't have sound on it for some reason. How wide was that footprint? Oh, oh here, we <laughs> here we go. Here we go. It it actually went on up. You know, it shoved a bunch of it forward. Yeah. That debris. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, let me go find it again. Oh, that looked uh, like the uh, other film. All right. I, let me show you what happened to me up there. 
Don't ever, ever, ever do this. Here and see that it's full of leaves. Yeah, get this out of here. I'm all excited. Watch what I do in my excitement. <laughs> right there is a wad of snot. <laughs> and I put my hand right in it and rubbed it in my eyes. Really? Yeah. You can take a well when I when I did that I when I came home I was running a high fever and I stayed sick from October until the following February so it was it wasn't your snot was it no <laughs> it was a it was not my snot uh I, I knew I had something different wrong with me and I, I called them and asked them if they got sick and they said no they didn't get sick and so they uh i i knew i was the only one that pulled that litter out of those tracks and i just started watching my videos and i saw it that's, you, that's what you got a hold to that's what i, I got I, I got a hold to something that they had see there it is it, the whole leaf it. Matter of fact, this leaf right here that came out yeah. over it. It's, it's all wet. I bet you so, wear gloves next time. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, say, uh, you get excited, you know, because I mean, yeah, I told him, I said, you, you guys, y'all don't know what y'all want. Y'all won the lottery. <laughs> yeah. It's, Watch this one. I was fixing to say, if you could, could you not have that uh, analyzed? Oh, if I'd have known it, I would have. Look, see yeah. me reach. I'm just oscillating the file. See it? See it shaking? Yeah. <laughs> the stupidest thing I ever did. If you only had no dough, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, you're supposed to look. Uh, it's, it's like this. Uh, I'm not necessarily the best researcher in the world. Yeah. Uh, I am more like Mr. Magoo. You remember Mr. Magoo? Yep. He just stumbled into things. I was down there and I stumbled into it. If I hadn't been down there, I never would have stumbled into it. But does that not go to show you that even... Even guys like me and you that are into this stuff, we never know what you're looking at. You know, yeah. you didn't. Who would have thought you could you would run upon? Uh, uh, and I know it's kind of funny, but who would have thought you would run up on snot in a footprint on a leaf? If you, I'm trying to uh, let you see the the line of tracks. Uh, let me see, random pattern here. See what that shows. Yeah, can you see them there? They were yeah. just here, 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 here. And they disappeared right over here. And, of course, there was the an old bed of the creek right over here with just bare rocks. Yeah. Could have leaped over to the to that part. Uh, you see where it walked here, 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 three in, three in a row, and then over to the right some, and then another one. And then lost it after that. Uh, I think there was still uh, another one up here somewhere, but then that was it. Because it looks like a rock up there in that left-hand corner. Um, that was that's the, that's the old bed of the you know the creek split, yeah, and it, it went off a different direction and left that dry. Yeah. There was it rocks? It was rocks. Yeah. Okay, because the, then that would where you'd be. Uh, you'd have to a little bit more about tracking. I wanted to go. There's a lair up on the mountainside. Yeah. Uh, it's, I call it a lair. It's got a. It's it's a flat area up on a 45 degree slope, and it's got a, a waterfall with a little brook coming through it. It's carpeted in ferns. Uh, just a really good place to to hide. It's secluded, 
Yeah. And it, there was a deer carcass in there with Bigfoot tracks all around it. And that's it was headed for that lair. I know where it was headed. And I started taking off up that hill, and them guys had a fit. And they called me back. They said, no, 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 you ain't leaving us down here. <laughs> uh, so, all right, that brought up an interesting question. Are, are Bigfoot, and your assumption, are they meat eaters? Uh, I think they can be. They can eat anything they want to eat. Uh, well, yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> I, I've, I've got video of them uh, uh, sh shaking a, uh, what you call a skunk cabbage leaf in front of a game can. Uh, it's right there close to that, close to that same sandbar. He puts it down in front of the camera lens and yeah. shakes it back and forth. And, and you can tell he's already took a bite out of it and he just chunk, he chunks it off, lets it fall in front of the camera. Uh, just having a good time at someone else's expense. Uh, I, I would love to have access to your computer. I'd be on that thing for months, if not years, just to see the stuff you've got on there. Yeah. It's a, it's a, I, I could show you some stuff now, not just there, but all over. But Bluff Creek's a pretty strange place too, and it's got a lot. It's I call it the Mystic Garden. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a, just an awful lot of Bigfoot activity in that area. It's okay. it's one of, it's one of the hotter places you can go, but the hot places are the places that you see a Bigfoot at. So I. Yeah, it could be anywhere. Yeah. But uh, I, I see why they got that film there, you know. Yeah. Well, from what I understand, and all right, here we go. I love this stuff, MK. I love this stuff. Uh, do you want to talk uh, about the aftermath? Because as in any story, you've got a beginning, you got the middle, and you got the end. And usually the middle was where the action was. And there's always the end story. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, I don't mind talking about it. Okay. Um, I'll tell I'll tell you what I know. Okay. Uh, I'm going to lead you into it. And uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to get that part off for right now, Mr. MK, unless you got something else you want to show. Okay. All right. That's there we good. go. That's, that's good. Okay. All right. Guys, what you don't know, and I didn't know. To be honest with you, uh, until I started doing this and I got back into it again and, and MK was gracious enough to come on, uh, that I did not know what I call the rest of the story. Uh, I hope there are no kids on this, uh, channel right now. So Van, if you're, you're young and is watching, you might want to put him in another room. Uh, but this is, uh, this is what happened I and mean, the true story of, of, uh, what happened to this, uh, Miss Patty. Go ahead, Bam K. Let them know. Yeah, well, I, I tell you what, what might be better mm -hmm. if I could uh, just uh, plug in this jump drive okay. and just use my presentation that I did in Natchez. Okay. Uh, I have all the pictures already together. Hold on. Let me see if I can. No, I'll have to unplug one or the other. Uh, let me go, well, let me see if I can find it on my big, big drive. Okay. I hate to unplug that big one. Uh, you know, it's not good for it to plug it and unplug it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hold on. I'll just see if I can find what I need to find here on that drive. <laughs> Y'all are going to, this is going to blow your mind. This is going to blow your mind. The first, the first person that told me anything about any mishaps that took place down there uh -huh. was Miss Patterson herself.
Yeah, it said you me, didn't even know anything about it. No, I, I I didn't know a thing about it. I had I had one one thing that I, that would have might have told me something if I had put two and two together. But yeah. um, uh, let me see if I can share a screen again. Sure, you bring it up. I'll I'll pop it up. Okay, here we go. All right. All right, I'm bringing it up. Well, thought I did. You got it yet? There we go. Okay. That's Miss Patterson. That's Roger's wife. Roger's wife. There's me. In case anybody's wondering that I was there. <laughs> uh, she told she she uh I was supposed to uh, visit with her in the morning, visit with uh, Robert Gimlin in the afternoon. And while I was there, Robert Gimlin called. And she had already told me that they didn't speak unless it was about business. And uh, so I knew something unusual was going on and it was just a regular landline. And she got into it with him. And he did not treat her very well at all. I mean it. And I don't, I don't know whether he threatened her or what, but she turned around and slammed that phone down. And she turned around to me and said, she looked me straight in the eye and she said, MK, what would happen if somebody shot one of these things? I said, Pr probably nothing. And then she said, even if they shot it in the back. And, you know, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, Lord, I'm, I'm going to have to go back over that film again. <laughs> and she's pissed. You could tell. Well, she went and got a, a shoebox out of the top of the closet. And it had some envelopes and stuff in it. And she went to pull an envelope out. And in doing so, she drug five transparencies that were four inch by five inch. They came out with the envelope and tumbled out onto the floor. And I picked one of them up and she says, those are Roger's negatives. I said, no, ma'am, these are not negatives. They're positives. They're the actual print pictures just on a piece of celluloid. And I held it up to the light, and I like I had a heart attack. Uh, I'll show you if I can find it here. Hold on. Yeah, this I got to see. There we go. Give it just a minute. It'll come up. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That came off. That I picked that up out of the floor. I took it in the backyard and put it up against a piece of typing paper and okay. took this from it. That right there is what yep. I'm referring to. Now and that is, is not that? a that is not the creek. That is a dugout pit. You see the worm right there. Uh huh. Uh, <clears throat> for I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but to say that they had sh killed several of them before mm -hmm. you see this this film of patty and they had rendered them taxidermically and put their bodies in this pit 
and we're going to cover them up. But the creek water f leached back through and floated all that stuff out. Mm. And so they, they eventually gave up on it. They tried to cut a trench over here to the creek and drain it back to the creek, not really understanding hydraulics. And so they eventually just got dug them all back out and took them over there next to the mountainside and reburied them. Well, let me ask you a question, MK, if you don't mind. Yeah. Is this the same original film or how was this picture taken? This is off the original film. It was made, uh, pr projected onto a transparency, uh, okay. developed, on, developed onto a transparency. It's it's uh, one one copy away from being the master copy. Yeah, and, and why do we not? Do we see this in the original film or the film that the, you can the, watch the, now? For the first time I ever had an inkling of it, I'll show you. Was before this this even happened. Let's see, let me see if I can get this up. Uh -oh, I missed one, one letter, didn't I? Yep. <laughs> Where you go? It's 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 getting worse and worse. Well, never mind. It came up anyway. Yeah, it come up. Um, on this laptop, you got to be very careful. It is. It's just you just touch something else and it screws up. Yeah. Yeah, and I explained to everybody a while ago that you were on a new computer. All right. Now, this, this, this is the first time that I had any inkling at all. And let me, let me find it here. That's what I'm curious about. Let that come up. Yep. And I'll, I'll just get to it. Okay. I, I thought I would. Get rid of that. There we go. He's running behind her, down lower than her. And aiming straight up at her. And it's in two walk sequences. This is the end of the first walk sequence. And next thing you know, she's out on the sandbar going upstream. Now, the second sequence, oh, I've seen it right there. I gotta find it here. Now the second sequence is the one that mostly everybody sees with the uh, uh, it famous is. three fifty two frame. Okay. Let me see if I can sit, pick it out here. This is the first time I'm seeing this, MK. It's uh I sat on it for a long time. I can see. I can see why. Because I, uh, I you know I've watched your other interviews and you don't even show this. That's why it's fascinating. Not, I've, I've got to go back and find the thing. I don't know exactly where I where I, I may have to go back to the beginning. Well, what? Let me just, do not let me just lose that. Me. Do not lose that picture I told you that I wanted before the show. I still want that. Okay. <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about. Now, what's this yeah, picture? Yeah, I do. 
Uh, I'm just starting at the beginning. Okay. There's, there's a half track, by the way. I don't know what I just did. I didn't hit my button right. Hold on. I got it. Okay. Try it again. Just quits working. That see that half track? Well, right there. Yep. She just stepped just out of that track. Yeah, just the front ball of the foot. Yeah, like you was talking about earlier. All right, I think I'm coming to it. That's that's it right there. Now I, I had seen that's this. Yeah. He, he he scanned across there and he picked up some of that bloody red hole. He didn't know it, did he? No. But it remained unexplained until she said that. And then yeah. when I saw that that entire frame, Lord almighty. I, this is it, just it really didn't take too much too too it wasn't too hard of a uh, investigation to to come up with what had done happened uh, but the, the what's difficult is is you're going to have a lot of people that really love bob gimlin yeah i never said bob gimlin did anything i i don't have any evidence that bob gimlin even was around when the film was taken because he's not on the film that's right. I only and have his did, word. I have his word for it. And he did deny not being there. Uh, no. Uh, well, I mean, he denied the film. Let's go that route. It's a. Uh, I'll tell you what Bob did tell me. He said, MK, if I had it to do over again, I'd throw my gun down and try to get her to talk to me. <laughs> yeah well there you go on the on the gun part you know i don't believe he did he I might not don't. have he, but there was a whole bunch of people there that would and they were there for that purpose yeah that's that's the story i'm wanting you to get to uh they had a tracking but dog I'm, that they brought in out of canada they they claim was the baddest dog in all of Canada. It, it wasn't a tracking dog. It was a attack dog. It was a, a, a white German Shepherd uh, that belonged to North American Guard Dog Services. And they I don't know how many times they had used this dog, but I'll show you something. Uh, let me go to Creek Images. Hold on. I already had this stuff all in one folder on that jump drive, but yep. I, I just I just don't want to pull my big one off and on, you know. No, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, I can see. fill it. I can fill up. Uh, fill in the gaps for these these folks. Ah, I seen that folder said creepy music. <laughs> Three five two. Uh, highest quality. That should do it right there. Well, if you don't click on it fast, you lose it. It populates. Yeah. Hey, I'm learning how to do things on this computer that I've never thought I could do either. Some of them you have to act quick. I just saw it. It says highest quality. I'm going to show you something. This came from her. Okay spectacularly clear image it is. you got to remember that all just just off the field of view here is that pit with the red stuff in yeah it. okay yep, to the left they bring that 
they bring that dog up there and I'll show you. Is that a dog print I'm looking at? It is. And it's not just a dog print. Let me open it up with photo impact. I'll show you. Every every copy of frame 352 has that cropped out. But this one. Now, let me go. You see a ballpoint pen mark right here? Uh-huh. Where he touched the ballpoint pen? It's cropped right there, every copy. Okay. That's, that's dropped off. Now, let me, I'm just going to boost the contrast. You see what color it is? Yep. Yeah. That's that stuff that was down in that hole. Yeah. I was fixing to say it looks kind of like brownish red. Yeah. Uh, More brown than red, though. Well, that's that's just because it is this was a pretty faded image. Uh -huh. But I have a feature that will it's made to restore faded images. There you okay, go. Okay, now I see it. Yeah. Yeah. It gave it its true color. That even looks like a dog print. It is a dog print. And the name of the dog is White Lady. It's a big girl. Yep. Big dog. So you don't you don't see that on the regular film. No, it's 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 all cropped off. Somebody went over it and cropped it off. Yeah. They saw that. You see a handprint right here on this log out of made of lime. <laughs> uh, see right there? Yeah. And this right here is a piece of equipment. They push that log this way toward the, toward where the camera is. There's there's two two tires, one that's off the field of view, and then this one. Did they crop that out too? Uh, no, because I was able to find it. Uh, let's see. I'll see if I can find it now and show it to you. There it is. Tire track animation. Kind of, kind of took a different turn for you guys. There didn't it is. It? See where, it, see where it pushed that log out right there. Yeah. There's a track right there, and there's the other track right here. You you pushed it out of the uh, there to see right there where it was sitting in yep. that little hole there. That the more you looked at it, the more you were able to realize that the whole cotton picking thing had been a, a, a giant event. Yeah. Um, hold on here. I should have another one even. Let's see what this one looks like. You can see the lugs on the tires. I just went ahead and drew them in, but I could see yeah. them. Watch when that the yellowish photo comes over. See what I'm talking about, yeah. guys? If there's anybody has studied this done. film. I'm sorry, Game Can I go ahead? Hold on. i got to start restarting. 
Where is it? it must be under here. Yeah. Play. Uh, here we go. See those lugs? Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't know, you wouldn't think to see that. No, uh, it, 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 it by by the time by the time I started reevaluating the film, yeah, in the light of what she had told me, and yeah. then this 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 big old bear hunter came forward, uh, and tried to sell me one of the guns that was used. And he told me a bunch of stuff. He knew all those people too. I guess I probably need to catch some people up. Uh, or what we're talking about. Now, let me go to the tracking dog video then. Okay. Hold on here. Because I know good and well these these guys are going to ask me what uh, how to piece this together. And be glad to do so. But right now I'm letting Mr. MK do his thing because I'm sitting here just in awe like you are. It, it's hard to... It's 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 a it's a much larger story than you can tell in one yeah. city. Yeah. Uh, hold on here. Tracking dog complete. There's a tracking dog film. There's Blue Creek Mountain Road. You see the Bigfoot tracks? They're yep. not they're not bear hunting. You should see the dog. Yeah, she. I think she's later in the film. Let me speed things up. There's well, there a dog. They're carrying a double barrel rifle. I believe that's what that is. They bring her over to this little red hole. This is not even the same red hole. Yeah, you, oh no, oh yeah. Now, I mean that's her, clear as day. They let her get the scent. Let me back it up again. This is in the bed of Bluff Creek. That's how they took the Patterson film. Yeah, that's, that's how they did it. This right here is a rendered hide off a of juvenile. Why do they, I see a reflection right there about where her nose is? You do. You see the dog in it because that's a little pool of watery blood. They they had this thing in the creek. And they brought it out and threw it out of the back of the Jeep all over to where it's there sitting at now for them to bring the dog and let the dog smell it. And then the, the chase was on. Okay. I got, I got you. It's a scent thing. Like a bird dog. Yeah. See, there's a road right there they're on now. See that yeah. road? Yeah. There's another hide rolled up with the with the flesh to the outside. Uh, there's two hides that show in the tracking dog video. That's it right here. See the dog reacting to it? Yeah. It's rolled with the with the fur to the inside, like a like a taxidermy guy would yeah, do. So, so the skin is basically uh, is being exposed. Yeah. Not, uh, not what's, the fur. what's underneath the skin, you know, the fleshy, fatty. Yep. yep, yep. Uh, but it's like you would tan a deer. Like you would tan a deer, except it's not a deer. Yeah. That, you're, that's you're what I'm, this guy right here, his name is J.C. Buttram. He's a school teacher in Orleans, California, 
who makes extra money by hunting bears for a warehouser. He's, and this is his first time to graduate from bears to Bigfoot. Oh, what an education he's in for. Yeah. This right here is Jim McLaren, even though he denies it, it's him. This is John Green, and this is Dale Moffat, the handler of this dog, who they flew in from Canada. You see he's got a full body harness. Yep. He told Al Hodson that that dog was a killer. Mm. And he said, the beast, the beast is going to get my dog. And then, and I'm going to be next. <laughs> uh, mm -mm. All right, guys, let me, let me explain something to you. Uh, there's a reason I brought this up let, uh, for Mr. MK. Uh, all this time, he has been trying to prove uh, the validity of this film, and he has a lot of work, and still does a lot of work, and, and is still finding stuff all the time. Uh, that's why I put on there, you, you really need to uh, subscribe to his channel because it's, it's no telling when he pops something up. Uh, but this is kind of what I call validation even though as cruel as it may sound to some of you guys, uh, it's validation of his hard work. And from what it's not a hoax is what I'm trying to get at. This is a total different side than what you guys have been told. Okay. This right here sh shows a stack of logs on a truck in the bed of Bluff Creek. And there's your Jeep, the red Jeep that they threw the hide out of. Yep. And there's a, a, horse turd down here that they're real puzzled about because these guys went back to Canada and came back when they heard one was shot. And they were back here the next day and Roger Patterson arrived the next day. So it was one of his horses or so to be assumed. Oh, they're all, they're all puzzled by it. See John Green looking at it. There it is right there. Yeah. He's now looking I, at it like, what the heck? Yeah. Now, I know this kind of has been kind of controversial, but the guy in the middle, what's he doing? Well, there's, there's two people with receding hairlines in this video. Mm -hmm. One of them is this the pilot, they, Keith Chiazari, mm -hmm. and the other one is Robert Titmus, who denies, who John Green denies he was there. Mm-hmm. You notice they're all wearing logging uniforms. The same okay. uniform. I got a picture of Renee DeHinden on that Blue Creek Mountain Road wearing the same uniform. Really? Yeah. I mean, it kind of looks more more militaryish. It, well, that's like what the logging type. companies were issuing back then. Okay. Uh, John Green uh, was a huge investor in logging. Oh, really? Yeah. And whenever they ran upon a Bigfoot, they would call him. He would get the he would get a phone call, and then he would show up. Okay, because I was under the assumption that he was just basically a another uh, uh, what they called the the Big Four back in Bigfoot re the the infancy of Bigfoot research. Well, his, his family his family <laughs> had gotten wealthy with logs logging. Okay. So his, uh, he had he had lots of pull in the logging industry. Okay. So there's a different side of story to Mr. John Green than than. Oh I've yeah, told. there's plenty. Uh, uh, none of these people are who they say they are, figuratively anyway. Uh, they they all have a second story that's more true than their first one. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm getting at. Renee Renee Rene DeHinden. He uh. He claimed to be a, a person who had abandoned his family and had taken up residence at a skeet shooting range and reclaimed the lead shot, and that's how he made his living. Hmm. But uh, according to uh, Ivan Sanderson, he was a 20-year officer with the Canadian Forestry Service. Oh. And, and he had gotten up every day and hunted Bigfoot 
and was paid by the Canadian Forestry Service. Uh, so his first story is just a cover-up. Just a cover-up. Okay. Okay. Grouchy, I know. grouchy, grouchy dude, too. He'll, he'll threaten, you, threaten to kill you in a heartbeat. <laughs> well, what about John? John? Yeah. He probably would do less threatening, but maybe doing it more likely to do it. He's, he's your si silent guy that you yeah. got to watch out for. Okay. I got you. All right. Uh, guys, I, I don't know if I should tell him on the, on this show or just tell him later on, uh, uh, what, how to connect the dots on this. Um, I would suggest you probably go watch one of his, uh, his interviews, uh, because I think he's done a great job so far. This has been really fun. Uh, I, I really wanted to talk about, and I guess if you want to come back on again, MK, we'll, we'll be glad to have you if you're willing to do so. Well, I, I am, I, I, you know, it, it, we can, we can try to put some more of this together in a more coherent way or, or we can, can, can go off in, you know, on a tangent with some other stuff, it, whichever you prefer. It, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, I'll be glad to have you back on again. Uh, cause I know we're running an hour, hour and a half already. Uh, let me see. You want me to go ahead and knock that off MK? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll knock that off real quick. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and that way I can explain to the chat room a little bit more about what they're actually hearing and, uh, listening to, um, uh, and there's some other things that, you know, y'all don't know about Mr. MK is, he has uh, studied other films and other uh, evidence out there abroad, and uh, he is in association with uh, some other Bigfoot researchers that you do know about, uh, such as Jeff Meldrum and on and on and on. Uh, so if he can come back on, I, we will be glad to have him and tell him, tell him some more stories because I'm really kind of interested also in that because uh, I don't know much about this with MK, uh, the tire the one that tosses a tire. Uh, oh, that in the East Texas videos. I so. yeah. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. I would, I would like to know that, some more that, about that. Those are fantastic videos. Yeah. yeah. We'd like to know about those too. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, when you get some more time, you can tell me and we'll have you back on if you would like. Sure. Okay. All right, guys, I'm, we're going to get out of here. I don't know about y'all, but dang, I said arrested and, and a lot of fun. Yeah, well, it's 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 valid answers. You know, you may not like them. And then, that, and, that is the, the what uh, how the old people say that's the God's darn is truth. Yep, yep, the God's darn. You're, you must be from the south. Yeah. Matter of fact, no. Okay, Yazoo City. <laughs> uh, but anyways, guys, uh, we are going to get out of here. It's done run uh, hour and a half. I, I thank Mister M K Davis for his time. Thank you. Uh, and you can see now why he's one of my heroes. And, uh, guys, we're going to get out of here. And we appreciate y'all coming. And let me get over here. MK, I really do thank you. Thank you. No, I appreciate it. I really do. We're going to get out of here. And uh, don't go nowhere. I'll see you soon after the intro, okay? Okay. <laughs>